What is the best square in New York? Well, I'm here in Times Square, and in a previous math video I made in New York, I expressed my disappointment that even though it's called Times, very little multiplication is taking place. But then afterwards, I realized that Times is not actually the worst part of the name. You see, it's called Times Square, but if you look at it on a map, it's actually shaped like a triangle. So are any of the squares in New York actually square? Well, to find out, I took all the area on Manhattan, which is below Central Park, the kind of stereotypical bit of New York. And in there, I counted 14 different locations which are described as being square. And I figured, come on, it's on a grid street system. Some of them are going to have to be pretty square-ish. Well, in fact, a full five of them are triangle-shaped. One of them, Perrette's Square, is actually described on Google Maps as a triangle of landscaped green space. I'm like, oh, come on. What about the rest of them? Well, only two of them were close enough to be called a square. But before we get to those, let's first of all look at the worst of the offenders of the squareoids. I am here in Washington Square Park, and when you remove all the square attempts, which are actually triangles, and you take anything which is not a mathematical shape, and then there are a few squares which are a shape that in the US is called a trapezoid, the rest of the world calls it a trapezium. Once you remove those, you're left with all the squares which at least had the decency to use right angles. And of those orthogonal attempts, George Washington Square is the worst offender. This is very much a square in widescreen. While I'm in New York looking for shapes, I'm going to take a quick detour to check out a triangle. Behind me on the ground is the Hess Triangle. So back in the early 1900s, David Hess owned the land around here, but in 1914, the US government used its eminent domain rights to take the land back. But in 1914, the US government used its eminent domain rights to take the land back for public use. However, later on in 1922, his heirs discovered that the surveying kind of outline of the land the government wanted missed a tiny bit of his property, which is that triangle there. They technically still owned that bit, and so they put a mosaic on it to say that they own it. As of 1938, they sold it to the cigar store next to me here, which I believe still owns it. A lot of people know about the Hess Triangle because they heard about it in the 99% Invisible podcast, which is where I first came across it. I highly recommend it. And in the podcast, they describe it as being about the size of a very large slice of pizza, which probably says more about New York than the Triangle. However, on the Wikipedia page for the Hess Triangle, it's described as an isosceles triangle. I was like, that's, that's curious. That's a very specific way to talk about a triangle. Don't get me wrong, big fan of describing types of triangles, but is it really isosceles? I should check. Okay, I got sides of, well, one is 62 and a half centimeters, the other two, 67 and 67 and a half. I'm prepared to call that pretty isosceles. In second place, our honorable mention is this square here. This is Stuyvesant Square. I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. It's named after a guy from the Netherlands. You can see a statue in the background over there, and I have no idea how to say it correctly, but there is no better way to find out how to say a word than by using it incorrectly in a YouTube video. I found this out last time I did a video in New York, and I pronounced Houston as Houston. I mean, Houston was I supposed to know that was the wrong way? So yes, this square, whose name I'm not 
saying uh, GAN actually has the best ratio of all of the squares I looked at in New York. If you compare its height to its width, they're within 1% of each other. But the reason it's not my number one square is because it's got a few fatal flaws. For a start, there is a road running right through the middle of it. So it's less a square and more two adjacent rectangles. On top of that, its sides aren't straight, the corners aren't quite orthogonal. And so that 1% figure I gave you, that's actually what you get if you kind of line up a square of best fit. So it's pretty good, it's worth a mention, but it's not the best. The best is where we're going next. At last, here I am in the number one square in New York, and it is Tompkins Square. My goodness, is it orthogonal. It's got nice right angles, it's got very straight edges, and the width compared to the length are within 2% of each other. And on top of all of that, it's actually a very nice square. I mean, I have seen a lot of squares at this point in the day, and I can confirm this is quite a good one. So there you are, Tompkins Square, the best square in New York. Undoubtedly, some people will have other opinions as to what the best square is. So the 14 I looked at are in the description below, along with their GPS coordinates. I just put images of them into Photoshop and kind of measured around it to see how many pixels across and how many pixels down. If you find a better one, please do let me know. I mentioned earlier on my previous video when I was in New York last time, where I calculated the linear equation of Broadway. If you haven't seen it, you can uh, check it out there. And as always, if you haven't subscribed to my videos, I hugely appreciate that. You will see more videos with both maths and math. Just got recognized by someone in Times Square, but very sadly, they declined my invitation to appear in the video.